Hello, Living Stream Church. I am uh, glad to greet everyone who is watching this service live. Uh, we are going into the Word of God together again, and this is a wonderful time. I would like to take something positive out of uh, every crisis that people that we are going through right now. And I think one of the positive points uh, right now is I believe people, they are more careful or they pay um, attention to what they listen, especially to the word of God. I'm talking about Christians nowadays. So thank you guys for tuning in with us. And the topic of my message today, it's called how to survive difficult times, how to survive difficult times. I know that uh, many of you are probably thinking that, wow, it's already difficult, but let me, uh, let me tell you that it's not as difficult yet, guys. We're not in that uh, big, uh, difficult time yet. I think it's still yet to come. We, our job is just to get ready. We are to get ready physically, emotionally, but most importantly, spiritually. And um, as we are living through this uh, crisis, in our country and in many other countries, you know that because of this coronavirus, many jobs are closed, restaurants are closed, uh, many places are closed, You and the um, unemployment rate is going up. People, uh, some people, they are without income, and uh, because of that, people are scared, some people are very worried, and they don't know how to prepare better for this crisis that is probably... Um, is coming yet and some people are afraid that bank systems will collapse some people are afraid that maybe our dollar our money will lose value and people are not sure how to face this how to prepare for this and i would like to share with you some practical uh, theology how to get ready for the possibly future crisis that are coming first of all last week last sunday we spoke we read from uh, the scripture together jesus he was very clear he gave a warning to his church to to his people that this is what's going to happen before he returns again to take his church and in this list we read from luke chapter 21 we read that there will be earthquakes there will be epidemic uh, things there will be wars and there will be also famines so we talked about many uh, statistics about many facts last sunday today i would like to concentrate on famine the Bible says that uh, at the end of the times, famines will come. So some people are quite, some people are wondering how should we prepare as believers? What should we do? Should we buy supplies? Should we build s huge storages? Should we like I don't know buy uh, canned food? Where? How much should we buy? For how long should we prepare? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So let's try to read several scriptures from the from the uh, several passages from the scripture and see what bible recommends to do as far as how christians should prepare uh for for the future first passage i will be reading from proverbs chapter 27 verse 12. it says a prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions this is the word of God and the Bible says that a, a wise person, a blessed person foresees, uh, foresees the danger and takes, uh, and takes precautions. That's one passage. Second uh, passage on the other hand says something a little, it's a little different. It's Matthew chapter 6 verse 25. Uh, Jesus said, I tell you, do not worry about anything. Don't worry about everyday life, whatever you will have, whether you will have enough food to eat. Very interesting, very different approach. Don't worry about what you will have to eat tomorrow. It doesn't mean that you have to be lazy. It doesn't mean that we have to be ignorant. Bible condemns laziness. But the, 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 the main point of this 
of this Bible verse is that we have to put our full trust in our Lord Jesus Christ because he is the one who provides. There is not much we can do on our own human strength. There's another example from the Bible. It's Luke chapter 12 verse 18 through 20. It talks about a, a rich man who thought about everything, had a business plan. The Bible says, he said, I know I will tear down my barns and I will build bigger ones. Then I will have enough room to store all my wheat and other goods. And then I will sit back and say to myself, well done, my friend. You have enough food, enough. You have enough stored away for years to come. And then the Bible says, but God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. And what's going to happen to all your storage and all your food? Basically, the conclusion is once again that we cannot plan everything. We cannot foresee everything. If we look at other examples from the scripture, for example, Joseph, he was the one who was planning for famine. He was the one who stored up a lot of food for many people. On the other hand, we see when God, he provided bread or manna for the people of Israel. He gave them food, but when people were trying to store the food, then they would get worms in that food. The food would go bad because of the worms. So once again, we see there a lesson that God teaches his people to completely trust him. So we read from different angles how people could get prepared for possible uh, for possible hard difficult times and right now uh, while people are some people are talking about you know this economical possibly economical collapse what are we gonna do what should we do how should we get ready should we get um, food should we get uh, supplies should we be st should we um, stock up on supplies and food etc the, the answer is yes and no why yes first of all because the bible says that a wise person a prudent person foresees and takes precautions so we should be wise we should be wise and we should understand how to prepare ourselves now i'm talking from the spiritual side from the material from the material side yes it's okay maybe you know to buy food for a week maybe it's okay to buy food for a month maybe for three months yes that's fine but what about how many pounds should you buy for how many years should you buy how do you have enough storage for, for, for all of that all these questions are very very, very real so yes on the other uh, yes we should get ready because we can look at our parents our grandparents they have experience they live through crisis they live through war they live through famine and they survived and now they can teach valuable lessons uh, especially young generation i would like to challenge especially young generation guys please listen don't don't spend money don't go into debt Right now we are to reevaluate everything we want to possess, everything we want to buy. Because I'm sure you see now very clearly that uh, before we used to dream about these nice expensive cars, nice expensive houses, etc. But now we understand that the times may come where we will be all, it will be all about just surviving. It will be all about just food and all of these other materialistic things they will fall away they will become so secondary so we must be wise especially our young generation the generation that was born here in us we are not prepared we have nothing but uh, um, a trampoline in our backyard we don't have gardens we don't have land we don't know how to survive we don't know how to live on low uh, food supply you remember, I remember one um, 
grandfather he was sharing a story with one of the young people from our church and he was saying how they went through famine how they were going they, they were so hungry they were starving they were looking for food they were desperate it was such a difficult time and one of the young boys he said to the grandfather why didn't you order pizza what's the problem what's the big deal about it our young people they don't know how to how, what it is they don't know what what it is they don't know how to react to this so that's why I'm calling especially our young people to be wise and to be prepared with everything in all areas. Talk to people who have experience. Stop looking into, st stop looking into luxury, into pleasures, etc., etc. On the other side, why, why it's not maybe necessary to go into that direction very seriously because even if you got stuck up on food even if you got plenty of supplies even if you bought a lot of everything what if something happens to you because of this virus or other viruses and you just you might just pass away what, what what's what, how this food will save you how this will protect you for example what if you have enough supplies you have logically planned and foreseen everything what if an earthquake comes and uh, all your barns and your house will collapse how how will how will this protect you how this will help you it will not help you if you are a believer and if you have enough supplies most likely if you are a good christian you will have to share with everybody you will have to share with your uh relatives with brothers and sisters which means that now you need more supplies now you need more and you won't have it's impossible to have enough to feed the whole world and the bottom line is that we can't we can't rely on our on our on our strength we cannot rely on our plans on our logic yes we must be wise because hard times are possibly coming we don't know when it's gonna come we don't know when it's gonna be really bad but we must understand this that the bottom line is that Jesus Christ he's our provider we trust in God and when we trust in ourselves more than we trust in God then it's a problem when we trust in our barns in our savings when we trust more in our uh, connections because we have money etc etc then it will be a big disappointment we must rely on God and we must not get confused. We must be moved by God and his revelation. Joseph, when he was storing bread, remember guys, he was moved by revelation from God. He was moved not by news. He was moved by revelation from God and he knew exactly how many years before, how many years after. He knew exactly the time and he was moved by revelation. So today we should not panic. We should not go into either extreme. We should listen to the word of God and we should be connected to him in the spirit. And... Uh, the biggest advice that the Bible gives us when in that same chapter Luke 21 when it talks about these difficult times that are possibly coming the Bible gives us this warning gives us this practical advice how should we get ready how should we prepare Luke chapter 21 verse 36 it says watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the son of man so the practical advice biblical advice how you should get ready for these difficult times or how should you survive watch and pray always be on alert stay on alert and pray stay on alert and pray at all times that's the biblical advice and often people i'm sure many of you guys you have probably already thought about maybe buying something extra maybe you already have enough supplies for a couple months or several uh, weeks but the biggest question is 
I know that you went probably out of your comfort zone. You did something very unusual while you were getting ready for this. But how did you get ready spiritually? Did you spend the same equivalent? Did you spend about the same time or energy investing into getting ready or being prepared spiritually? I am not worried about physical preparation. I'm sure that people will somehow manage to do that, but I'm more concerned about our spiritual preparation. The Bible says we should be ready and we should pray because we don't know when, we don't know when Jesus Christ will come again to take his church. Second uh, thing I would like to talk to you about guys is stuck up on peace i know maybe the title is not very doesn't sound very uh, nice but we must have enough peace inside of of our hearts we should worry about this storage we should be stuck up on peace i will explain myself we talked about how we could get ready physically or spiritually but when it comes to peace, I would like to, uh, before I read this passage, I would like to explain that peace, it's opposite of peace is worry, stress, irritation, negative spirit instead of spirit of peace. So we as believers, often we meet people and we see that one group of people, they're very calm. They are stress-free. They trust, they believe, they, they don't panic. The other half, the other group of people, they are so stressed, they're so worried, they're consumed by worries of this life. They're tired of this, of this fear and they can't help them. And we ask why, why people react differently. And one of the answers would be, well, it depends on... Uh, People, they have different emotions, they have different character, some people are more open, some people are more closed, etc, etc. This could be true in some cases, but let me give you a biblical answer. A biblical answer why some people are always worrying and, others peop and other people are always calm. 1st John chapter 4 verse 18. 1st John 4 18. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. There is no fear in love. What does that mean? Guys, the key word in this passage, even though it's not written in this Bible verse, but the biggest revelation for everyone who fears, who worries, is because you don't have a true relationship with God, that's why you fear. Because the Bible says, love, fear not. Which love? That it talks about your love towards God and God's love towards people. When you understand God's love, when you understand, when you have this loving relationship with Lord, it's not just religious relationship. It's not just attending church on Sundays. It's something much more, much deeper. It's when you have love, when you have relationship with God. The Bible calls us to love your God with all your might, with all your strength, with all your understanding, with all your heart. That's what, that's what, this is the relationship that God is expecting us to have with Him. And when we have this relationship, then the Bible says we, we fear not. We have peace. We, we, we worry not. We have peace. We are, we, we're, we're comforted by God because we love Him, because we understood His love, because we are matured in His love. We trust His love so much that we don't worry about anything. And those who are worried, those who are scared, 
it has nothing to do guys with just emotions or just your personality it has to do a lot with your relationship with God your relationship with God amplified translation says but perfect complete full-grown love drives out fear because fear involves punishment so the one who is afraid is not perfect in love has not grown into a sufficient understanding of God's love that's why it's so important for us to understand that if we don't have this relationship and it's impossible to love without relationship that's why the Bible says that fear that's why the Bible says that there is no fear in love no, relationships relationship is impossible without love that's why for us in order to be in order for us to be stuck up on peace we need to build invest into relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says that uh, Psalm 119 those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble those who love your instructions which means those who love the word of God those who love the word of God they have great peace that's why now it's time for us especially those who are worried those who are afraid of anything we should be we should dwell in the word of God don't just read but dwell in the Word of God don't just be interested but love the Word of God because that that is the source of peace that will bring you peace everything else news social media it will bring something opposite than peace but remember the Word of God the Bible says brings us peace let me give you another illustration from Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 it says don't worry about anything don't worry about anything instead pray about everything tell God what you need and thank him for everything he has done then you will experience God's peace which exceeds logic exceeds anything we can understand his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus so some people are asking me well it's easy to say don't worry but I can help myself there's nothing I can do don't worry but it just I don't know it somehow I'm still worrying I, I can't turn it off I don't know what to do the Bible says gives us very practical step-by-step -step process it says don't worry about anything but instead listen guys pay attention to this don't worry about anything but instead it says pray always pray always pray always pray always 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 how often does it happen is it true that possibly we're not always praying or maybe it's true that we are very rarely praying and maybe there is it's not consistent we don't have our morning or night devotion time where we set everything aside and we have this encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ you might say well uh, if uh, I can't help not to worry but have you tried this the Bible says don't just stop worrying but do something instead replace your worry with something else it says don't worry but instead pray always pray always the second step it says here with thanksgiving reveal your desires to the Lord with thanksgiving 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 if you are not grateful to God most likely you will be complaining if you're not grateful to God for what you have most likely you might be depressed if you're not grateful to God most likely you don't have joy you don't have peace you you are probably in a negative mood it's very toxic it's destructive not only to you but to those who are around you that's why the Bible says don't worry but instead pray and be grateful be grateful don't forget to worship 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 your Lord and God and be grateful for everything and then 
that passage says and then as the conclusion as a consequence you will be rewarded you will have God's peace that exceeds your understanding exceeds the logic you cannot explain this peace you cannot draw a picture of how it works it comes from God directly from God it's supernatural in the time of crisis for those who believe for those who rely on his word for those who choose God as their foundation they will receive this super natural peace the bible says it will guard your mind your thoughts from 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 these evil negative bad news all over the news it will guard your mind and your heart from this that's why we should follow this procedure step by step i like that it's very practical very practical you can read different translations and you will see it says don't worry but instead step one two three pray be grateful etc and if we follow this we will have enough peace guys and during those times we need peace it's so valid right now it has great value peace god's peace god's peace because right now we live in hard times and most likely hard times are still yet to come that's why we need we need God's peace in our life. The Bible says, Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep in perfect, in perfect peace all who trust in you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. So everyone who is in peace, everyone who doesn't panic or doesn't worry that's an evidence that they trust God but if you don't have that peace if you are consumed by worries that simply means that you rely on yourself yes that's what it means that's what the Bible says and you don't you have never seen it that way from that perspective you have never proclaimed it that hey I trust in myself I believe in myself no but that's what it is because the bible says those who trust in him they are in perfect peace it's not just peace it's perfect peace because their their thoughts their mind they trust god but if you trust in yourself and it feels like you're losing control things have changed many things have changed economy is changing school system have changed many things went out of your comfort zone that's why that's why right now you're losing peace and because you're trusting yourself you're struggling but i'm calling i'm challenging you brother and sister please trust god and focus on developing a relationship with him with god because fear love has no fear if you don't have love towards God you might have fear but if you have loving relationship true relationship with the Lord you will not have fear the last thing I would like to share with you is this what we should do in difficult times is we should sing yes we should definitely sing and it has nothing to do with your musical abilities it has nothing to do with your um, with your uh, skills it has to do with your spirit yes with your spirit if your spirit sings trust me you will do well through crisis job chapter 35 verse 10 it says but no one says where is god my maker who gives me songs in the night no one says where is god my creator who gives me songs in the middle of the night yes these are the, the songs that come out out of your spirit yes out of your spirit they have nothing to do with circumstances and as we know this story of job he went through very hard times and somehow we talk about songs let me introduce you another very important passage from the new testament it's acts 16 when paul 
and Silas, they were in prison. This is how you, what, this is what you should do during quarantine. Right now I know that very, a lot of people, they are on quarantine. Some countries are closed, some cities are closed, many houses are closed and we're talking about possibly the United States is, might go on a national lockdown. So what should we do on a quarantine? Let me read you the example from our brothers who went there before ahead of us. Acts 16 verse 25. Around midnight, Paul and Silas, they were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners, they were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, the guard said, what must I do to be saved? And they shared the word of the Lord with him. And he accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he got baptized. They were locked down. Their situation is very similar to ours. Many of, of us were, were closed, sitting in homes. There is no many choices. There is no many places where we can go. And we're called to stay home on quarantine. What did they do? And what do we do? They were beaten. They were bleeding. We're not bleeding yet. They were probably hungry. I'm sure we stuck up on food pretty well. They were facing uncertainties. Today we're facing uncertainties as well. But listen to this church. Every believer who knows how to calmly face uncertainties, it's a mature believer. If you are able to face unknown, uncertain, but with peace and confidence, that means you are mature. For everybody else, for us, it's time right now to raise up and grow up. Raise up and grow up. Raise up and invest into building this relationship with the Lord. Because love has no fear. Love towards the Lord. And when you are so sure and you understand His love towards you, you will not be worried about anything. No matter what crisis are yet to come. They were on quarantine and they started singing something very unusual. The time is very weird. It was at midnight and no one told them, hey guys, we want to sleep. Are you crazy? Why are you singing? The Bible says prisoners, they were listening. Because something was so special about these songs. Maybe they didn't have nice voice. But their face maybe. Their spirit. God's presence. Impacted everything, everyone. And they were listening. They were paying attention to these believers, the way they behave through crisis. And they shared, they preached the gospel. You might say, well, now we live in the days where we're, we have to keep this social distance. We can't even preach to anyone. We can't even share the gospel with anyone. Let me challenge you. Let me challenge you, believe me, I believe that if you only pray, Lord God, during these times, please send me at least one person who I can witness to about your love. 
who I can share with what the Word of God says about coronavirus, who I can share with about the signs of end times. Send me a person when I will be taking a walk, when I will be going to the grocery stores. Send me a person who will ask me a question and give me this opportunity Lord Jesus Christ to witness to them, to share the good news with them, to tell them what the Bible says about everything, not just what the news is talking about. Trust me, do you think God will answer that prayer? Have you ever thought about this idea? Or have, did we give up and we said, there is nothing we can do. We're just gonna sit home and watch news and do nothing no no we as believers we have a special destiny we have our own calling church of jesus christ has a special calling especially during these hard times and our job as believers is to catch that calling and to express it and to share it with others so people would see the light so people would hear the gospel we need to live and behave so people would ask us these questions what should we do to get saved what should we do to get saved did you notice that Paul was not preaching he was not bombarding people with sermons he was just singing in his spirit and rejoicing in the Lord and people came to him and asked him they ask him, so how do we, what do we do? How do we get saved? This is what we can do today as believers. Brothers and sisters, for us, it's time to sing in our spirit. Yes, you remember first Christians when they were persecuted during Roman Empire when they were given to lions you remember what they did they sang everyone was astonished why how come who told them where did they learn this song why are they singing it's time to panic to run to be scared and they are singing yes because their spirit is singing I remember you can watch this song on YouTube there is this singer his name is Todd Smith he represents a Russian Christian who was persecuted who was in prison he was in prison because of his faith and the guards authorities they tortured him he was beaten many times severely but what was holding him he would hold to the scripture he would write bible verses on every piece of paper he could find and he would sing every day he would sing a song and when authorities they saw that they are unable to break this man of faith they took him on this last walk of death they were ready to kill him and at that moment something very unusual happened very uninspected all other prisoners who knew this believer maybe they mocked him in the past and maybe they were irritated when this guy was singing but at that moment when guards were dragging this Christian men all other guys from their cells they started singing that same song that this Christian used to sing for many years guards they were shocked they looked around they looked everywhere and they said to this guy Dimitri who are you why are you singing why are all these people singing what have you done to them we're about to kill you 
Who are you? The Spirit is different. He said, I am the Son of the living God. That's why it's time to sing for us. And people who are around us, our neighbors, roommates, colleagues, they should all see that we have something different inside of our spirit that we can share. We have something that we can offer to this world. It's this song of joy. You remember we read, no one says, where is my God, my creator? who gives me this song in the night, in the middle of the night, when everything is dark and scary. We have this God inside of us. You might say, well, what can I do? What should I do? How should I get ready spiritually? What can I do not to worry? I will tell you, turn off your phone every night. Will you do it? I will give you another solution. Stop browsing through Instagram. Maybe take a fast from Instagram or social media. Will you do it? Probably not. So your question was wrong. Your question was wrong. You shouldn't ask what should I do to get ready. You shouldn't be asking what should I know more. Not to worry. Just start doing what you already know. Just start obeying the Word of God. You have enough of information. We live in this world of information where we're bombarded with information and we, we felt into this trap where we are deceiving ourselves and we're expecting another preacher who will tell us what to do. What should we do to fix this? What should we do to fix that? No, you don't need new information. You just need to obey and do what you already know. If you would only obey half of what you know, you will be already victorious in your life. You don't need new information. You just need to apply what you know. Obey in Jesus Christ. And trust me, you will go through crisis. But the biggest, the most dangerous crisis a spiritual crisis. It's not economical. It's not epidemical. The biggest crisis we should be concerned about is spiritual crisis. Spiritual crisis. When we look at the people of Israel, God would always interfere when He would see spiritual crisis in His people. Today, guys, we live in a spiritual crisis. The whole world bows before a phone. The whole world worships phone. It became an idol to many. We cannot live without it. We cannot disconnect. We cannot put it away. We don't have time. We claim that we don't have time for God. We don't have time for devotions because we have room for idolatry in our place in our life and God he's a jealous God he's jealous so you think this coronavirus is enough for his people to get ready or do you think our people are still on social media most of the time that's why everything is still yet to come and his church will get ready Yes, God will find ways and methods how to prepare His church and it's for our own good because He is our loving God. So I'm calling you, I'm challenging you, please find time in the morning or at night where you will be just you and your God. Be honest with yourself. Do you have a song in your spirit? Are you singing in your spirit? The last thing, you know, people can take away everything from us. People can take away food. People can take away supplies. People can take even away our life. But they can't take away the song of my spirit. The song of faith in my spirit. 
they will never be able to take it away till the last breath I will sing that song to my Lord and my God and now as we are entering this quarantine as a church as a city as a country remember guys remember about this example Paul and Silas on quarantine in prison the Bible says they were praying and singing praying and singing praying and singing that's why it's time to pray right now church young people single people couples young couples I am challenging you to please let's take this time to pray and to worship pray and worship pray and worship the Bible says we should be on alert and we should pray because we we never know when the Son of Man will come again I bless you in Jesus Christ and I ask you to please let's where you are right now you can kneel down you can stand but let's take a moment and let's pray right now our Heavenly Father our Heavenly Father we stand before you we stand before you and we chose to pray to you yes Lord God we put our trust in you Jesus help us to live through these hard times and mostly help us to be prepared for the times that are yet to come help us to be prepared in Jesus name help us to develop this relationship with you help us to invest into this in this relationship with you Lord help us to have this love love that has no fear love has no fear Lord Jesus help us to pursue that loving relationship with you Lord God Jesus help us to fall in love with your word help us not just to help us not just read your word but help us to dwell help us to abide in your word in Jesus name help us to understand your word in Jesus name Lord God help us to always pray and be grateful help us to be to pray and be grateful so your peace would protect our mind so your peace would lead us would protect us in Jesus name Lord God I give you thanks for everything Lord God we stand united with everybody every family everyone who is watching this online Lord God we bow before you we chose you we came to you we put our trust in you Lord God I pray for those who are scared I pray for those who are worried Jesus Christ come with your abundant peace in Jesus name come with your peace and comfort Lord God help us to admit help us to repent help us to come and bow before you not before fear but before you and Lord God cry out and confess if we have to Lord God and ask for forgiveness Lord Jesus I'm asking you to please pay attention to those who are sincere who are open Lord God right now who are in need of you Lord God God I'm asking for your protection in Jesus name I'm asking for your protection in Jesus name Lord God bless our families bless us as a church lead us as a church Lord God we are in need of you forgive us Lord forgive us for idolatry that often we put you as number two and not number one Lord God Lord God Lord God I thank you Jesus I love you my Lord Lord help for your church to hear this wake-up call help for your church to hear and to receive this wake-up call Jesus and to do something help us to take full responsibility Lord God Lord God help us to see this world the way you see it right now we're getting ready physically we're getting ready materialistically Lord but help us to get ready spiritually reveal to us what it means to get ready spiritually Holy Spirit I'm praying say something deeper say something more on top of what I have said to everyone personally Holy Spirit speak to every heart with love 
In Jesus name I pray right now Holy Spirit do so Lord we worship you Lord we worship you Lord we worship you Lord we worship you we worship you we worship you Lord we thank you Jesus for everything Holy Spirit come with your peace to every house to every heart speak to every father mother old and single Jesus forgive us forgive us Lord continue to teach and speak to us Lord God and help us to remain faithful faithful in Jesus name I pray and everybody said Amen. Thank you.